God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Lord, in your anger, do not punish me. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Through your anger, all my body is sick. Through my sin, there is no health in my limbs. My guilt towers higher than my head. It is a weight too heavy to bear. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, in your anger, do, do not, not punish, punish me. me. Lord, you know all my longings. My wounds are foul and festering, the result of my own folly. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. All my frame burns with fever. All my body is sick. Spent and utterly crushed, I cry aloud in anguish of heart. O oh Lord, you know all my longing. My groans are not hidden from you. My heart throbs. My strength is spent. The very light has gone from my eyes. My friends avoid me like a leper. Those closest to me stand afar off. Those who plot against my life lay snares. Those who seek my ruin speak of harm, planning treachery all the day long. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord. You know all my longings. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do not abandon me, for you are my Savior. But I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the dumb, unable to speak. I am like a man who hears nothing, in whose mouth is no defense. I count on you, O Lord. It is you, Lord God, who will answer. I pray, do not let them mock me, those who triumph if my foot should slip. For I am on the point of falling, and my pain is always before me. I confess that I am guilty, and my sin fills me with dismay. My wanton enemies are numberless, and my lying foes are many. They repay me evil for good and attack me for seeking what is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. My God, do not stay afar off. Make haste and come to my help. O Lord, my God, my Savior. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do, Do not, not abandon, abandon me, me for, for you are my Savior. My eyes keep watch for your saving help, awaiting the word that will justify me. From the second letter of the Apostle Peter, I am writing you this second letter, dear friends, intending them both as reminders urging you to sincerity of outlook. Recall the teaching delivered long ago by the holy prophets, as well as the new command of the Lord and Savior preached to you by the apostles. Note this first of all, in the last days, mocking, sneering men who are ruled by their passions will arrive on the scene. They will ask, Where is that promised coming of his? Our forefathers have been laid to rest, but everything stays just as it was when the world was created. 
In believing this, they do not take into account that of old there were heavens and an earth drawn out of the waters and standing between the waters, all brought into being by the word of God. By water that world was then destroyed. It was overwhelmed by the deluge. The present heavens and earth are reserved by God's word for fire. They are kept for the day of judgment, the day when godless men will be destroyed. This point must not be overlooked, dear friends. In the Lord's eyes, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are as a day. The Lord does not delay in keeping his promise, though some consider it delay. Rather, he shows you generous patience, since he wants none to perish, but all to come to repentance. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and on that day the heavens will vanish with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and earth and all its deeds will be made manifest. Since everything is to be destroyed in this way, what sort of men must you not be? How holy in your conduct and devotion, looking for the coming of the day of God and trying to hasten it. Because of it, the heavens will be destroyed in flames and the elements will melt away in a blaze. What we await are new heavens and a new earth, where, according to his promise, the justice of God will reside. So, beloved, while waiting for this, make every effort to be found without stain or defilement, and at peace in his sight. Consider that our Lord's patience is directed towards salvation. Paul, our beloved brother, wrote you this in the spirit of wisdom that is his, dealing with all these matters as he does in all his letters. There are certain passages in them hard to understand. The ignorant and the unstable distort them, just as they do the rest of Scripture to their own ruin. You are forewarned, beloved brothers. Be on your guard, lest you be led astray by the error of the wicked, and forfeit the security you enjoy. Grow rather in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory be to him now and to the day of eternity. Amen. I will create new heavens and a new earth, and you will rejoice forever in my creation. See, I will make all things new. I will create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people a delight. See, I will make all things new. From a Sermon on Man's Mortality by St. Cyprian, Bishop. Our obligation is to do God's will and not our own. We must remember this if the prayer that our Lord commanded us to say daily is to have any meaning on our lips. How unreasonable it is to pray that God's will be done and then not promptly obey it when he calls us from this world. Instead, we struggle and resist like self-willed slaves and are brought into the Lord's presence with sorrow and lamentation not freely consenting to our departure, but constrained by necessity. And yet we expect to be rewarded with heavenly honors by him to whom we come against our will. Why then do we pray for the kingdom of heaven to come if this earthly bondage pleases us? What is the point of praying so often for its early arrival if we would rather serve the devil here than reign with Christ? The world hates Christians, so why give your love to it 
instead of following Christ, who loves you and has redeemed you. John is most urgent in his epistle when he tells us not to love the world by yielding to sensual desires. Never give your love to the world, he warns, or to anything in it. A man cannot love the Father and love the world at the same time. All that the world offers is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and earthly ambition. The world and its allurements will pass away, but the man who has done the will of God shall live forever. Our part, my dear brothers, is to be single-minded, firm in faith, and steadfast in courage, ready for God's will, whatever it may be. Banish the fear of death and think of the eternal life that follows it. That will show people that we really live our faith. We ought never to forget, beloved, that we have renounced the world. We are living here now as aliens and only for a time. When the day of our homecoming puts an end to our exile, frees us from the bonds of the world, and restores us to paradise and to a kingdom, we should welcome it. What man, stationed in a foreign land, would not want to return to his own country as soon as possible? Well, we look upon paradise as our country, and a great crowd of our loved ones awaits us there. A countless throng of parents, brothers, and children longs for us to join them. Assured though they are of their own salvation, they are still concerned about ours. What joy, both for them and for us, to see one another and embrace. Oh, the delight of that heavenly kingdom where there is no fear of death. Oh, the supreme and endless bliss of everlasting life. There is the glorious band of apostles. There the exultant assembly of prophets. There the innumerable host of martyrs, crowned for their glorious victory in combat and in death. There in triumph are the virgins who subdued their passions by the strength of continence. There the merciful are rewarded, those who fulfilled the demands of justice by providing for the poor. In obedience to the Lord's command, they turned their earthly patrimony into heavenly treasure. My dear brothers, let all our longing be to join them as soon as we may. May God see our desire. May Christ see this resolve that springs from faith, for he will give the rewards of his love more abundantly to those who have longed for him more fervently. We are citizens of heaven. From there we eagerly await the coming of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will renew our lowly bodies and make them like his glorified body. When Christ your life appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. He will renew our lowly bodies and make them like his glorified body. Let us pray. Lord, increase our eagerness to do your will and help us to know the saving power of your love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.